Man vs. Gun. M1 carbine, 30 caliber. Hello shooters, today's installment of Man vs. Gun is the M1 carbine. I think every red-blooded American that's watched any World War II movies has seen these and wanted to uh, fire one. They're fun little guns. When I was in high school, there was a guy, I lived in a small town, and there was a World War II vet there. He was a paratrooper during World War II, and he had an M1 carbine. He took me uh, up in the mountains one day and let me uh, run a few magazines through this. It was the highlight of my teen years, and uh, I just really enjoy these little carbines. They're, they're fun little guns. So let's uh, let's start the butt stock and work our way forward. But first, the weight on this thing is light. This thing weighs five pounds four ounces, and that includes the empty magazine. Uh, much lighter than anything else we've tested, and you can really feel it too. It's really nice and lively in the hands. The length is length is just shy of 36 inches, 35 and a half inches from the butt stock to the uh, the tip of the muzzle. The butt plate is checkered steel, uh, better than slick steel. Um, and you know, we're, you, you got to remember, this rifle was developed in the mid 1940s. Um, so this was the very first magazine-fed um, rifle that the U.S. military adopted. So this is this is the granddaddy of them all with regards to being magazine-fed. So we got to cut it a lot of slack. This thing was you know developed back in 1940, you know, three, 42, 43. So uh, back then they had uh, metal metal butt stocks. Uh, this is metal butt stock and it's checkered. Um, the the butt stock itself is wood. It's non-adjustable for anything. That's what that's what they were back in the day. It is what it is. You get what you get. If it if it gives you a good cheek weld, it gives you a good cheek weld. If it doesn't, you know that's, that that that's the brakes. But um, but uh, but it, but it worked really well back in the day. The butt stock is is wood. Like I mentioned, it's conventional. There's drawbacks to wood. It can get wet and it can swell. It can crack. It can break. Yeah, plastic can crack, crack and break too, but plastic is much more environmentally. Um, uh, it handles the elements a lot better than wood does. Length of pull is 13 and an eighth, which is not too long, and it it's just you know it it shoulders really nice and quick. It's not. It doesn't have such a long length of pull that you got to push it out and then bring it back in. Like the pull is good. The trigger pull on mine, uh, on this specimen here, is right around six and a half, and it's a pretty short pull, so it gets it gets high marks for a trigger pull. Um, got a good trigger pull. There is no pistol grip in the sense of a modern type firearm. This is what it is. It works. I obviously like pistol grips better than this style of stock, but to run a carbine, uh, this is what you got. Um, the magazine well is really sharp. There's no, there's no flaring whatsoever. You gotta, when you push the mag in, you gotta, you gotta get it situated just right, or it may hang up. Uh, but this was the very first magazine-fed uh, long arm developed for the military, so we gotta cut us some slack. Um, magazines are 15 rounds. They do make some 30 rounders too, but everything I've Heard and red is their kind of spot and reliability, and that's been my experience too. This has a uh, two 30 round magazines, and you know they I wouldn't stake my life on the 30 rounders. Maybe you got one that runs really well with a 30 rounder, uh, but and all the vets were telling me that you know, the 15 rounder is what they all ran. Uh, the magazine release is up here; it's serrated. Uh, it it works pretty well as a right hander. As a left hander, you got to use your other hand to uh, get rid of the magazine so it's you know one side only which is you know the way it was back then um, the safety is a rotating lever on the early carbines this was also a button but as you can imagine uh, having this magazine release be a push button have the safety be a push button that could that could lead to bad problems so they switched the safety uh, to a rotating lever I'll show you a close up of this a little bit later but uh, but it works surprisingly well from the right side, and it works really well from the left side too. Right side operation. I'll show you. I'll, I'll have a close up. Charging handle is metal, and it's a hook. It's uh, very 
you can when we do the close-ups of this stuff you'll see that Mikhail Kalishnikov he uh, he took some things from the M1 carbine to make the AK-47 no question um, charging handle is reciprocating it does go back and forth uh, the bolt catch there really is no bolt catch there's a manual bolt catch that I'll show you during the close-ups but it, the, the bolt doesn't lock open on the 30 round magazine it does lock open but then as soon as you pull the mag out the, the bolt slides forward so it's not really a bolt catch in any uh, traditional sense of the word rear sight on the uh, the very first M1 carbines the rear sight wasn't so good they switched them out with uh, these adjustable rear sights adjustable for windage gen ele elevation really good really good sight on the M1 carbine um, the uh, ejection of brass is okay it's not the best when I was running this through the man versus gun drills uh, I think when I was doing uh, type 3 malfunction clearance drills in the prone uh, a piece of brass actually came back and hit me in the safety glasses so the ejection of brass is erratic some of them would kick forward some of them would kick kind of back some of them kind of kick straight up in the air so uh, you do got to be uh, maybe that's just this carbine I don't know but uh, but you got to watch out for that a little bit. But I shot it left-handed; it was no problem. It wasn't kicking brass into my teeth or anything, so no big deal there. Um, the front handguard is wood. It's pretty thick too. Um, there is no metal heat shielding or anything of that nature. But this is a 30 carbine round. I'll show you a close-up of the 30 carbine compared to some of the more modern cartridges, and it, it doesn't produce a lot of heat like some of the more modern cartridges do. Um, so you'd have to put a ton of rounds down range to heat up this handguard where it'd be uncomfortable the front sight is excellent it's uh, it's like an M1 Garand front sight it's got protective ears uh, excellent front sight there is as you can see there's absolutely no muzzle device they didn't have muzzle devices back in those days they didn't understand how to mitigate flash they made like a cone flash hider back in the day but that doesn't really do much um, they just didn't understand how to make flash suppressors back in the day so there's no muzzle device it's not optics compatible yeah there is companies that make you know optic uh, a scope mount you can attach on this but it's not optics compatible like a like a modern AK with a side rail or with ARs with the Picatinny rails and stuff this is not optics compatible like that it does uh, come with provision for a sling and it's kind of a cool sling I, there's not a sling with this one but this uh, this slot here is for a oiler where you keep the gun oil so that's actually part of the sling system kind of cool um, but uh, let's let's now get some close-ups and get into the nitty-gritty of these things they're they're cool little carbines okay shooters here's a 30 carbine cartridge here's a 308 cartridge I don't even have a 30 or 6 cartridge I know this sacrilege but I don't but you can see why uh, when the guys were first issued this 30 carbine they're thinking holy smokes that that sucks that it's so little but you know when you compare it to uh, some of the more modern variants um, it's not a total pipsqueak and it was a 30 caliber cartridge so uh, it absolutely did the job okay shooters here's the uh, here's the carbine let's talk about how the safety the safety's in the on position right now so to get it to fire all you do is you put your finger on the tip of it and rotate it back now it's in the fire position then your finger very easily goes into the trigger guard and you can pull the trigger the safety does go on after the trigger is pulled unlike like the M4 AR series um, and it also works pretty dang well lefty too watch watch how we do left-handed okay left-handed see how I got my finger in there I got my finger all the way through left hand I push it over then I can pull the trigger let's do that again left handed fingertips on it push it over then you can pull the trigger okay. magazine release you can see it serrated there you can push button the mags are somewhat uh, these are not the most reliable mags on the planet they're very thin gauge steel I, uh, I I haven't done this and I won't do this, but I promise if you drop this on cement after one drop, it's probably dead. 
It's really thin gauge, uh, lightweight uh, steel. This was developed to be like a, a rear, uh, guys in the rear, like uh, artillery guys, um, officers, you know, that didn't get a, a uh, M1 Garand or something like that. It ended up as a frontline uh, firearm, but it wasn't developed as such. Um, so the magazine release is just... Now look much. at the operation here. When I pull this back, it rotates the bolt. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to uh, get an AK and bring it out here too. And you'll see that um, this is the same way an M1 Garand operates. And you can see that Kalishnikov, all he did is he used this exact system, even down to the, the design of his charging handle. But what he, he did is he just rotated this charging handle thing. He rotated this bolt carrier 90 degrees up to the top and readjusted where the charging handle goes. But the, uh, the, the machining in the, in the bolt carrier there, or slide they call it on M1 carbine, is almost identical to what you'll find in an AK. So let, let's, let's, let's do that. Okay, so I got it out of the stock. You have to forgive my dirty hands. Anytime. Okay, so that's how the, there's a gas, the gas hole in the barrel is right there and there's a little piston there. It just pushes back in a box, this box. This box is connected to this rod. And this is where your charging handle is. So that's how that works there. The bolt gets pushed back by the gas. It comes back a little ways till the pressure drops to a safe level. Then it just unlocks the bolt and works the bolt to the rear. The operating spring brings it back. Okay, let's let's dismantle this now. Okay, so here's that box area where the gas it just hits that box, pushes this back. This is where this interfaces. See that machined area in the in the bolt carrier there? That's what brings this thing to unlock. Now let's bring an AK out here. Here's my AK. It's best seen from the underneath side. When I pull the charging handle back, this is the, there's the bolt. You see how it, when I pull the charging handle back, you'll actually see the bolt twist a little bit. You see that? That's because of the way the, the bolt carrier is machined. Let's pull the bolt carrier out. As you can see, look at this machined area right here. It's an exact duplicate of the M1 carbine and the M1 Garand. All Kleshnikov did was rotate it up 90 degrees. When this is in the carbine, <clears throat> it's like that, and the bolt is worked sideways. When this is in the AK, the machine part is straight up, so it just works the bolt from the, from the vertical position. But even look at the uh, similarities in the bolts too. There's the carbine bolt. This is the lug that's uh, that interfaces with the what they call the slide, what I call the charging handle, the bolt carrier kind of thing. Look at the massive extractor. There's the ejector, firing pin. Now let's look at the AK. It's got another lug or two, but exact same design on massive extractor. Non uh, non spring non spring loaded firing pin. I mean Kalashnikov, he did a good job of studying the M1 carbine and the M1 Garand when he uh, when he developed the uh, the AK-47, and that has some bit to do with the uh, the reliability. Yeah, everything I've read or heard about the uh, M1 carbine or the Garand is that they worked in uh, all climates and all places, but it's really interesting to me to see how uh, these designs were incorporated by Kalashnikov in the AK. Anyhow, let's go out to the range and shoot this M1 carbine and put it through its paces. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the shares, likes, and subscribes. And we'll see you next time. Headshots at 25 yards. The carbine is just so light. It's just so nice and easy to shoot. It's balanced really, really well. It comes up nicely. It's got a nice trigger pull. Safety is easy to work. It's just a pleasure to shoot. Here's doing uh, Type 1. Since the magazine is so short, you can go either over the top or under the bottom. 
it doesn't really matter with the carbine. The distance is about the same that your hand has to travel. It's not like a like an AK or something where you gotta uh, go a long ways over the top of the receiver and down to the middle of the gun because the charging handle is right on top of the gun there. Works out pretty well. Left handed works out pretty well. Um, Safety is easy to work with your left hand trigger finger. Here we are doing um, speed loads. Since the since the magazine well is not beveled, you do have to really, really be on your game to get the magazine in there exactly straight. Because it's, uh, it's got sharp corners on it, and it's not a huge magazine well. But, you know, with practice it works out pretty dang well. I did uh, magazine changes both with the 30 rounder and the 15 round magazines. Here we are doing my favorite knot. Uh, type 3 malfunction clearance drills in the prone. Um, it is set up for left-handers. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but, you know, you can do the workarounds doing it right-handed. One nice thing, one really nice thing is the gun is so light. It's just easy to hold up one-handed like you have to here doing uh, malfunction clearance drills in the prone. It's just not a heavy gun. But you can see that... Uh, you know, you got to get that magazine in there straight, or you'll fumble it up a little bit. Here we, here we go again, from the right side. I fumbled the magazine there a little bit too. That's the, that's one of the biggest drawbacks of the carbine is the non, non funneled magazine well, non beveled magazine well. That one just hit me in the eye. That brass did coming out of the gun. Good thing you wear safety glasses. But notice that uh, it's faster left-handed doing Type 3 just like an AK is. Because everything is right there. You can just hold on there with your left hand. Your right hand does everything it needs to do. It's all right there in a good spot. Here we go. Watch this. Pull the magazine out. Rack the charging handle. Stick the magazine in. Rack the charging handle. Go to work. Pretty simple. Since it's so light, it makes it nice. And since it's so light, it's easy to come up on target. It's not a hard recoiling gun. It so doing the 10 rounds at 5 yards, it, it's just a pleasure to shoot. It almost shoots itself. It's, it's a great little, great little firearm. Love these little carbines. They're just good little guns. And again, since it's light, it's real easy to do the uh, 1 to 5 and back, too. Not a lot of mass out there swinging around. So if you've, if you've got a carbine, an M1 carbine, don't feel bad about that at all. It'll, it'll keep pace with anything out there. There are some workarounds to put red dots on it, and if you can, boy, it would be a it would be a goal machine. I think Ultimac makes one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.